Okay. So these series are very prolonged, like very long series. So I'm going to skip some of the topics because these are about case management and uh, we need to learn the principle and we will review the case management later on. Okay. So now example of this case management is anaphylaxis. And as you guys know, they are immediate release type, depend on immunoglobulin. And um, to diagnose, you need to have two organ involved. Um, also, um, reaction of anaphylaxis is either uniphasic, one phase, usually um, a little bit start later and a little bit longer, and biphasic start earlier, disappear, and they're recurve. And uh, as you know, there are immunoglobin mediated and non immunoglobin mediated, such as you know the contrast, the aspirin, the transfusion. You guys need to read about this. Um, most common cause of anaphylaxis is food, but also other causes such as insect, uh, venom, um, medications, uh, vaccine, latex, exercise, immunotherapy, and sometimes idiopathic. We don't know the cause. Manifestation, it involves the airway, the breathing, the circulation, the bowel, the skin, and also can present with um, behavioral and psychological presentation. Um, now you have to differentiate it from asthma, but usually asthma affects one organ, and anaphylaxis usually at least two organs. A vasovagal reaction and vasomotor problem, uh, flushing syndrome due to medications or intoxication, panic attacks of psychosis, and other systemic mastocytosis, articaria, and uh, hereditary uh, angioedema all can present like anaphylaxis. Management is A, B, C, D, E. Exactly. You need an IV. Um, you need epinephrine ready. Um, um, if there is any baby on, and the baby is on medication, antibiotics you need, you need an IV access. You need respiratory support and oxygen. You need to treat uh, bronchospasm, airway. You need to support the breathing. And you need to give the um, anti-steroid um, steroid and antihistamines. Uh, when necessary, and sometimes we have to give beta blockers. Um, and then if the baby is okay, need to be observed at least six hours to look for the biophasic and recurrence of system, and you should have discharge plans such as having EpiPen. Have you guys seen EpiPen? Anybody used EpiPen? Anybody used EpiPen or no response? No, I didn't use it. Anybody used it? Anybody seen it? I just heard about it. it is it adrenaline auto injector? It's the adrenaline injector. It's the same. It's like, like the growth hormone, like the insulin. The child can use it as an auto injector. As an auto injector, over even over the cloth, you can give it. Yes. Yeah, it's called EpiPen, and we have EpiPen Junior. The difference is the dose. Junior is 0.15, and the EpiPen is 0.3. It's just like ready-made adrenaline dose. And uh, the child and, you know, whoever nearby can, can use it. And you have the medications for, uh, you know, for the pharmacological for anaphylaxis. I'm going to pass it for sake of time. Um, hypothermia when the temperature is below 35, and it's important we should cannot announce deaths when the temperature is below normal. Okay, and also the duration of resuscitation if the temperature is low need to be longer. And there are many predisposing factors for hypothermia, such as metabolic infection, ingestion, um, intracranial pathology, and near drowning. What is near drowning? Anybody can define it. Anybody can define near drowning? No? Okay, we'll have a session about drowning and near drowning, very important. So we'll speak about it later, as far as you don't know. Uh, the manifestation of hypothermia depends on the system. Uh, so there's cardiac manifestation, um, respiratory manifestation, neurological, 
uh, muscular renal metabolic are many and need to deal with it. So you'll take the hypothermia, whether it's a therapeutic or pathological, uh, with a separate session. The investigation need to be done for hypothermic patient. Uh, the management is um, A, B, C, D, E, and rewarming, that's all. Okay, and monitoring. Okay, and rewarming should be, depend on the, how we want, depend on the degree. So if it's mild, only removal of the exposure, uh, and we uh, warm with warm blanket, uh, that's all. While when you have moderate, you need active external rewarming. So you see the heated water mattress, the bed and immersion, immersion of the baby or the child in a, in a water when it's ever practical, or you can use, use radiant warmer. And then uh, we might consider active core rewarming, such as giving warm humidified oxygen or warm IV fluid. In severe, there should be a use of additional uh, core rewarming um, in addition to the oxygen and IV fluid such as warm gastric lavage. So we give warm fluid and then take it out. We do a rectal colonic irrigation. We do bladder correlation. And if that all didn't help, then peritoneal lavage and uh, maybe uh, cardiopulmonary bypass and ECMO in special circumstances. Frostbite, it can be um, a really problem with hypothermia. Um, I'm sometimes associated, sometimes they occur alone and it can affect the tips of the fingers, of the nose, of the ears, of the penis, of the toes. So all these can be affected. Uh, and sometimes very important to check the non-visible tissue. So when you have a, a, a hypothermia frostbite, please consider to check the penis of the baby. That's very vital. And sometimes we need, just in case we need plastic surgery and supportive of other studies. Okay. Um, so I'm just moving fast uh, because of the sake of time. Um, 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 hyperthermia or uh, sunburn, uh, it's increased the body temperature. Uh, uh, predisposing factor are many, young age, the exposure to an infection, dehydration, um, excessive clothing, uh, lack of acclimatization, so passing from cold to uh, warm areas, exercise, excessive sweating, cystic fibrosis, Relay day syndrome. Do you guys know what is the relay day syndrome? Anybody know what is the relay day syndrome? Or familial dysautonomia? Anybody? Okay, skin abnormality, thyroid storm, malignant hyperthermia, and neurological malignant syndromes. I'm not going to discuss these. Um, whenever we have case, we'll discuss it. Um, now the uh, 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 the symptoms and the signs are spectrum depending on the uh, uh, on the situation. Remember, in malignant hyperthermia, and then we'll define what's malignant. Dantrolene is very important to be available. Um, times it depend on the severity. So we have heat edema, heat crumbs, and heat syncope, depending on the situation. Um, uh, hypothermia also um, if heat exhaustion have its own manifestation and treatment is just cooling environment, monitor, rehydrate, and assess the input and output. You might need renal function, electrolyte, and CBC, or uh, you might need osmolarity too. Um, um, and then you need to observe at least six hours after normalization of temperature. Uh, if there is any um, CNS manifestation, so it should be treated like heat stroke. Heat stroke is, is a different issue, so it's need A, B, C, D, E, exactly same, um, monitoring long time, active uh, cooling, and also um, observation, especially CBC and ABG. Uh, we need also, it can affect the message, so we need CPK, we need uh, coagulation, liver function, and other things, please, when there is seed stroke, consider sepsis, so you need blood culture and antibiotics. Complications are many, such as seizure, hypothermia, myoglobinuria, renal failure, and arrhythmia. Acute hypertension um, depend on the situation, and it can occur anytime from neonatal. I have seen it in first, one day old. Um, um, so it can be due to medication ingestion, to do uh, withdrawal from the mother, cardiovascular, 
reasons, renal vascular reasons, renal parenchyma, endocrine, and CNS. So history, very important to take history, especially if you have cerebral manifestation, cardiac and renal manifestation, and if there is history of previ previous attacks of hypertension. Um, um, examination, A, B, C, D, as we learn. Um, clinical manifestation can be headache, can be visual problem. Um, uh, it can be also um, symptoms related to the heart, and it can be seizure and encephalopathy. What is encephalopathy? Anybody knows how we can define encephalopathy? Anybody can define encephalopathy? You guys are bored or no? Are you bored or no? Is anybody hearing me? Hello? No, no, dear doctor, we are hearing you. Sorry. Yeah, you're bored or no? No, never. No, dear doctor. Nobody here is board training? No? No board training here? Anybody is in the board? All of you are non-board training? Uh, I am second stage, doctor. You can your second year board. So in case you're bored, you're, they ask you of a question. Do you keep silent or you say your opinion? Or I don't know, you just say something. Huh? Do you know what's encephalopathy? The second year something board? Something in the function of the brain. Something in the function of the brain. CNS okay. function. Yeah. I'm changing it. CNS Close. function. Close, okay. Any other, any other, anybody other No. what's encephalopathy? Okay, so encephalopathy is a sign and uh, symptom of encephalitis without encephalitis. Okay, pathy, i'tilal al-damag, i'tilal al-damag, i'tilal al-kilia, nephropathy, same, i'tilal, pathy, i'tilal. Encephalopathy is a sign and symptom of encephalitis without actual encephalitis. So investigation for um, acute hypertension, of course, we need blood gas, we need renal function, electrolyte, need chest x-ray, ECG, and you may need echo. And we need investigation to find, you know, you know, plasma renin to look at is it secondary or not. And you might need catecholamine, you need TCHT4, just to see if there is hyperthyroidism. Treatment, again, is A, B, C, D, E, and controlling blood pressure. Okay, medications, um, the shorter, the better. We use labitalol, uh, but here sometimes we use uh, uh, shorter duration than labitalol. A nitroprusside, nifidipine, and hydralazine. Some of them are infusion, some of them are um, um, scheduled doses. Okay, well, we need to monitor the response to, um, and, and we need to monitor the blood pressure, either invasive or non-invasive, but should not be more than 10 minutes reading. Okay, and we should have a goal uh, to increase, decrease the uh, infusions uh, or stop them based on the level. And we always need to be ready for hypotension. Acute stroke, um, they are usually present with focal neurological sign and the standard for neonatal stroke, the standard story, baby born, there is nothing, went with his mom, stay in the arm uh, or go, went home. And within one hour, it has got convulsion, or still not going home at the combined care and got convulsion and readmitted. That's usually the story here. Um, so you can have weakness, you can have seizure, you can have focal signs, whether in the eye or in the tongue, okay, or in the motor. Um, so in the investigation, looking for the cause, so we use the INR. Do you guys know what's INR? Do you guys know what is INR? International normalization ratio. Correct. So international normalization ratio, PTT. Um, uh, we need also um, looking at the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, um, Oh my goodness. The blood group, uh, we need to uh, do CBC, we need to do fibrinogen, glucose, we need imaging, uh, we, we need neurological consultation, 
and we might need um, uh, uh, thrombolytic agents. And usually when we start, we should be ready so in a tertiary center. Initial management, make, make the, you know, normalize the blood pressure. Um, um, that's the very important. Control the seizure, uh, monitor the response to seizure, um, treating the airways, treating the breathing. Looking for causes such as infection, intoxication, and metabolic and trauma. Uh, very important to remember the coma when there is altered uh, uh, level of consciousness. It's very important to know how to assess the alertness, the orientation, and the coma level. And coma is mean a deep non-responsive uh, patient. And the cause in children are tips and uh, IU, so the tips are trauma, insulin, interception, and bone error, um, psychiatric and seizure, stroke, shock, shunt, and IU is alcohol, endocrine, electrolyte, encephalopathy, infection, overdose, and uremia. Uh, management is survey, do, do the primary survey, A, B, C, D, and the secondary survey, focus history or sample, and very important to look at mm. these um, you might need naloxone if you have narcotics. And naloxone, we give 0.1 milligram per kg. Um, very important to put in line and give it glucose, regardless of the reading, even if, but if you can do the reading, the sugar reading, that will be great. But if not, then you need uh, to give sugar based on clinical uh, uh, suspicion. Sorry, very but... important. Go ahead. Okay, but what about the management of the stroke? Management of stroke? Yeah, we talked about it. Normalize blood pressure. Okay. Okay. Uh, normalize the control the seizure. Uh, um, 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 support the breathing. And look for what about the ischemic and uh, hemorrhagic and, and consider a thrombolytic agent. Discuss thrombolytic agent, but it should be in a in a in a tertiary center with neurological consultation. Okay, what, anything else I missed? Uh, I mean uh, the ischemic and hemorrhagic one. So sorry, sorry, hemorrhagic. I don't hear you. The hemorrhagic and uh, ischemic, we should differentiate between two of them. I cannot hear you. Differentiate I'm between sorry. embolic and... The hemorrhagic is... Oh, hemorrhagic one. or... Okay, hemorrhagic uh, yes, or yes. thrombolytic? Is that your question? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Hemorrhagic usually will have mm -hmm. meningeal signs. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, when you do MRI imaging, you will differentiate MRI or CT scan. But when we say stroke uh, in in pediatric, we're talking about uh, death, about embolism rather than hemorrhagic. Hemorrhagic is difficult to differentiate in adult, maybe, but in, in it is not not difficult to differentiate. But when you do MRI CT scan, you probably um, uh, will find the reason. Neurological constellation, and we say thrombolytic, we mean it's an an, an embolic, it's it's a, a cerebrovascular accident rather than hemorrhage. Hemorrhage usually present with meningeal sign. Okay. So command altered level of consciousness. Um, very important to remember the uh, Glasgow coma scale, how to do, and how to distinguish between focal versus like um, all these will be will be taking it. This is just a general review. So uh, about coma will take it like a huge session. Everything you'll see that you will take in details. But right now I'm just giving you assessment of acutely ill child, like a general. I don't want to go to, as I said in the beginning, I don't want to go to details of each disease because we will take all these. Okay, so uh, there is a process to know how is it diffuse or focal, very important. So you can pause the slide and read it. Um, also, um, uh, the area involved of the, of the brain that is involved can be assessed uh, clinically, so whether it's a decerebrate or decorticate, it's a flaccid, um, 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 flaccid problem, 
if there is apnea, what's the status of the pupil, all can tell us which area is affected. Okay. Um, so further management of altered level of consciousness, A, B, C, D, E. And then we do an investigation to look for the cause, whether it's an infection or ingestion or metabolic, or sometimes it's just status epilepticus, okay? Um, uh, focal, very important when you have focal bleeding, it's very important, and uh, uh, head injury and infection. Investigation, of course, radiology for fracture, CT scan, 3D CT, and MRI all can help test CBC, electrolyte, uh, level of uh, medications and drug clotting factors, liver function, renal function, urinalysis and toxicology screening of the urine, cerebrospinal fluid for infection, for virology, for uh, biochemical and for direct uh, microscope, ECG, EEG, EMG all can help. Um, Raise cranial pressure also, they can present with headache, vomiting, decreased level of consciousness, full fontanel. Uh, but late, you'll develop cushion triad, which decrease heart rate, increase blood pressure and apnea. Of course, there will be asymmetry of the pupil, sun setting, papilledema, cranial nerve problems, especially those coming from the midbrain, decorticate or decerebrate. Do you guys know what is decorticate and decerebrate? Do you guys know what is the difference? Decorticate is the flexion of the extremities. Um, while yes, yes. Yeah, this is a flexion position. This is, yes, correct. Good, good. Uh, management of raised cranial coin, very important to remember the management. Why is kind of going overlapping, but I don't understand. Why is overlapping? Ah, oh, it's from here. Sorry about that. Okay, so management of the um, of the raised intracranial pressure depend whether the child is stable or not. So again, A, B, C, D, urgent C, T, and medication. Um, you know. It's raised in technical pressure, but you need to exclude infection. So antibiotics, blood culture, uh, we might need to do CSF, but we need to be careful. We might need to do um, a neurosurgical consultation to consider uh, um, intracranial pressure monitoring. Um, um, you know, we can do some maneuvers to, um, you know, to uh, control the, uh, or to trying to, um, uh, decrease the effect of intracranial pressure increasing on the on the brain um, such as you know putting the baby in midline position uh, again a b c d are very important uh, maybe we can do intubation to protect the baby uh, mild hyperventilation uh, depending on the pupil size uh, we need normocarbia normoth 
you know, uh, you know, try to uh, uh, make the baby normothermic, normocarbia, normovolemia, uh, normotension, and uh, avoid hypoxia. And then we might need to start medication to decrease the blood pressure, such as, you know, normal saline, um, um, uh, sorry, central pressure, not blood pressure, manitol, uh, dexamethasone, and else. Status ablepticus, again, definition, causes, management. I think you guys know it very well. I don't know to go. Investigation, very important to check the oxygen, the sugar, electrolyte, gas, um, magnesium, calcium, all can cause convulsion, infection. So blood culture, metabolic workup, liver function, and so on. You might need to do CSF and consider CT scan and also EEG. Management, very important, A, B, C, D, and then start anti-seizure. Most important is lorazepam, diazepam, midazolam. All these are very important medications, starting medication. Um, if there is no IV, we can give it buccal or, or, or rectal. And if this uh, be control, then you need to monitor and consider the cause. And if not responding, then consider another, such as phenytoin, phenobarbitone, may consider phenobarbitone the first line in neonatal period, not a must, but it's very important to consider the A, B, C, D, airway, breathing, circulation, and disability. Very important that if resistance, consider pyridoxine, B6, B12, sorry. Um, phenytoin, consider the IVH. Um, uh, if there is a bleeding, consider medications. Acute psychosis, it's a very big problem. If you cannot uh, constrain the child, uh, but the differential diagnosis of acute psychosis. What is psychosis? Do you guys know? Anybody knows in, what psychosis? In psychosis, uh, the patient will have uh, delirium and hallucination, not aware of the environment around them. Yeah, so it's a neurological, neurological, it's a neurological-like presentation, but the person lost in the lost the sight, lost the firasa, lost al hikmah, so he does not know that he is sick. Okay, so he the the the, the patient lost the sight. Okay, so but the differential diagnosis and neurological problem mainly such as the lesions, you know, trauma or hypoxia or metabolic, such as hypoglycemia, is very important. Infection, ingestion of toxin and medications, and other psychiatric problem, bipolar, um, um, pervasive developmental disorder. This is an old term, nobody used it right now. Um, adult type schizophrenia, <laughs> manic <laughs> depressive. Sorry? Question? Question? So acute psychosis, you know, organic or psychiatric, we need to know. Uh, management, patient safety, constrain the patient. Um, 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 uh, we can do uh, chemical constraints, so we give medications to calm down the patient. The first line is benzodiazepine. And uh, uh, then we can use also um, start medication with uh, psychiatric consultation. And the most important, we used to use the first line antipsychosis, but now mono, most people do not use it. So we go to second line antipsychotic, which is the SSRI. Do you guys know what's SSRI? Uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like uh, yeah. groups such as sertraline, atomoxetine, yeah. fluoxetine, uh, quetabian, uh, arbiprazole. There are a group of, of medications. Some of them are brain stabilizers. Um, uh, some of them are uh, alpha-2, uh, I mean, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Um, so they're very important medication. The side effect is way less than the first line antipsychotic, which is good. Foreign body. Sorry about that. Uh, 
Okay. So foreign body choking is very important or foreign body airway obstruction. Um, you know, depend is it complete obstruction or not complete obstruction. And also on the age, we can do the maneuver, five blocks, and I will teach you how to do it. And if it's one year, then it's abdominal thrust. You know, you need to give oxygen, airway breathing. Never try to remove the, 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 the foreign body blindly, but you can do maneuver to remove it. Always position the baby and patient in a position of comfort. Um, you know, we need immediate OR for removal, whether rigid uh, bronchoscopy or flexible. Um, attempt of intubation uh, should always be done in the OT. Um, epiglutitis, laryngotracheal bronchitis. I know. I think you guys know the difference and how to manage epiglutitis. Like more sick, more bacterial, laryngotracheal bronchitis, more viral. Management A, B, C, D, very important. IV access, fluid, um, you know, oxygen and respiratory support. Uh, um, you know, depend on the situation. Never intubate unless OT if you really think of epiglutitis. Antibiotics, especially community acquired infections such as third generation cephalosporin, are very vital. You might consider steroid. Uh, and the most important one you give is a tissue steroids such as dexamethasone or prednisolone. Um, status asthmaticus is very important presentation. And if we can manage at the, um, most of them, they go home from the emergency. Sometimes they have to come to the PICU and usually we manage by non-invasive, but sometimes rarely we need invasive uh, ventilation. It's again, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, medication, the salbutamol, the ipratropium promide, and uh, uh, methylprednisolone, written here, hydrocortisone. Um, I guess because of the availability, but the most important, you give methylprednisolone or prednisolone. Magnesium sulfate, salbutamol infusion, very unlikely. Intubation, very important to remember hypoxia, pneumothorax, and cardiac arrest are common or not rare. Uh, manifestation trauma are very important a b c d e very important uh, very important to stabilize the c-spine the uh, cervical spine and need to examine inspection up and down primary a b c d and then a sample of the second survey very important to manage the importance, the A, B, C, D, and then once again, you look at the, the others, such as fractures and whatever. Um, and very important to look for the um, um, airway and then breathing and circulation. And then you can do full um, assessment from skull down to the foot, and don't forget to examine the back while fixing the C-spine. Trauma, the ample or sample, very important to uh, uh, check for chest, abdomen, peritoneum, musculoskeletal, and neurological examination. Um, chest tube need very important when you have a trauma and, 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 and pneumothorax need intubation. Feeding tube, oro or nasogastric tube in the bladder, just make sure the bladder is not injured. We might need diagnostic radiology, chest and abdomen and spine, and investigation, abdominal trauma, very important. And, and so uh, history, um, checking for damage, liver, kidney, spleen, bladder, bowel, retroperitoneal bleed, and so on. Um, again, Treatment is A, B, C, D, E, and uh, sample, and then consultation with the pediatric surgery. Head injury, approach to head injury, very important to manage. Is it mild? Is it moderate? Is it severe? Uh, the classification and the management based on that. So um, um, mild when there is no loss of consciousness and the uh, Glasgow coma scale is 15. Uh, moderate one loss of consciousness for five minutes and the Glasgow coma scale between 13 and five and uh, severe when loss of consciousness is more than five minutes and the Glasgow coma scale is more or less than 13. 
Um, it can be blunt, just a crack, or it can be penetrating. Um, there is high risk criteria for head injury when the Glasgow coma scale less than 13, and there is local trauma, and there is evidence. Uh, uh, evidence of basal skull fracture, very important. Uh, that, that there is a bleeding from the ears. There is bottle sign. Do you guys know what is bottle sign? Anybody know what is bottle sign? Yeah, the ecchymosis behind the ear. Correct. And raccoon eye. Yes, that's absolutely the, the, the correct. Same. Yeah, um, Same over you the, have like uh, a basically. rhinorrhea, okay, bleeding from the eye, uh, bleeding around the eye, change of blood content, seizure, headache increasing in severity. So um, need CT scan based on the finding, um, you know, the mild, moderate type, the severe type, if there is evidence of basal skull fracture. So management. Uh, depend is it mild or moderate or severe and the question whether to discharge patient or not so we need a guidelines to decide that nothing very important um, patient goes home need instruction what happened if they do whether it's there is vomiting or stiffness or pain or headache uh, drowsiness change level of consciousness if the fluid comes from any opening all need to be informed and how to do Burn, not going to give you the burn. We will not deal with it. But burn is a very important area of the PIC work. Drowning and near drowning. So um, drowning is when the death occur within 24 hours. Near drowning when the death uh, occur more than 24 after 24 hours or um, uh, 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 when the fluid is not water. So these are called near drowning. Again, management is A, B, C, D, E. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, breathing, airway, uh, fluid should be 50 to 80% to minimize the fluid overload, unless you have a clear shock. Um, feeding tube, Foley's catheter, remove the wet, um, and treatment of intra increase in intracranial pressure, ABG, blood gas, electrolyte and chest X-ray, secondary survey, secondary investigation are very important, especially the coagulation factor and drug levels. Um, poisoning, no, I'm not going to discuss poisoning. We have will have sessions about poisoning, but it's very important uh, when we take history. You know, A, B, C, D, very important with poisoning. And then history, who, what, when, where, why, how, and how much is very important. A past medical history of the patient and the family will give you an idea about the medications. Uh, examinations, uh, very important to start from the hint that the head, the ear, the eye, and now also A, B, C, D, very important to examine the odor and smelling it. Um, investigation very depend. The most common is aspirin, paracetamol, iron. Okay, so the investigation may base on that. We need to calculate the osmolarity and osmo uh, with or without uh, considering potassium when we calculate it. Um, toxicology screening of the blood depend on the cause and the urine also depend on the cause. Uh, Broad spectrum toxicology screening are important, but sometimes specific is needed depending on the situation. Uh, decontamination, we do contaminate skin. Um, uh, so depend on the medication, you might need to remove the cloth, you need to flush with water, um, you, you need to avoid neutralizing eye, also remove any foreign body from the eye and consider um, local anesthesia and flush with water. And need a, a, a consultation, inhalation, remove from the exposure, A, B, C, D, very important to manage. Um, removal of the content of the bowel, whether by lavage or by 
charcoals or by decontamination or neutralization, depend on the situation, but rarely ever uh, uh, gastric wash or gastric lavage. You know, remember gastric wash, gastric lavage are almost always not indicated in any age. It's almost always not indicated in any age. Treatment, antidote, activated charcoals, alkalinization, hemodialysis, okay? Antidotes, a list of antidotes we should have, it depends on the situation. Um, you need a list of symptoms with you, so you remember anticholinergic syndrome, uh, sympathomimetic syndrome, cholinergic syndrome, and so on. I don't think you need to memorize it. Um, an ion gap, we will take it in blood gas, so I will not talk about it right now, but we will talk about it when we uh, learn how to read the blood gas. Acetaminophen is very important, you know, poisoning, need to know the stages and how to manage. Barbiturate, opioid, and opioid narcotics, and there will be a very important session about NAS and withdrawal, we'll talk about it. Calcium channel blocker. Insecticides such as organophosphorus are vital and are very important to know about how to treat and how to remove and you know the use of atropine. Iron, very important poisoning substance. Salicylate, again, is a common. Alcohol are very common. Antidepressant are also common, uh, especially the uh, uh, the first line, no, nobody used them right now. Uh, been stopped to being used for a long time. We go directly to the second line, antipsychotic, and uh, the reason is because they have less side effect. Okay, okay. Ventilation, I will not give you because we'll have complete sessions in details about ventilation. But it's very important to know the mode, the control, the set, the measure, the graphics, the loops. Mm. Okay, so we'll have many modes that we use. Assisted control, control medical mechanical ventilation, um, SIMV, SIMV, many modes. Pressure limited ventilation, volume limited and pressure support ventilation. Okay, we'll, we'll take all these. Um, Non-invasive non ventilation, we'll take it until on high frequency. Uh, we don't have jet here in Middle East, only in North America, so we'll concentrate on high frequency oscillator. And I finished this series. Okay, question. So next session will be care of a newborn baby.